It's another new song. This song is called cool. Plug In Baby. Plug In Baby is one of Muse's most iconic songs, with a guitar riff often cited amongst the best ones ever. Ooh! <laughs> Ooh, look at you! It was one of the earlier songs we had, probably from as early as 97 or something, when the band was not even signed or anything. It was just kind of, even though it didn't come out until our second album, it was it predates our first album. This verse melody became the chorus in the final version, and the old chorus sounded like this. When it came to making a second album, we just kept coming back to it because we loved how the chorus sounded and we loved how kind of melodic it was and everything. And we knew that it needed something else to really take it to the next level. And I started playing the chords over and over again and I was just like trying to find patterns, guitar patterns that went over the top of it and I eventually found this kind of riff. Yeah, it's really it's just a scale, going up and down a scale, but, but I, it, I found the way that it looped around with the chords was really like, it became a riff essentially. And I never thought that guitar riff would be the lead of the track, if you know what I mean. It, it was like something that came in halfway through, and then eventually we sort of felt, you know, this is just so cool, I've got to just start the track with that. The outro also went through significant changes, for example this guitar part ended up being cut out of the final version. Plug and Baby, I read that you said it was about I mean, I'm not sure if this is true or not, but this is what was written in your bio. It said um, that it was about if you could genetically modify a puppy and stop it from growing up. <laughs> and you said that, or it was in quotes that you said um, it. That's a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the song Plug In Baby, what is that about? Oh, shit. <laughs> you got to be You're honest, now. Matt. Be honest. I can't remember now. Um, what is it? I read, I read some book about, like, I don't know what it was. Something to do with... Um, like uh, robots, kind of. No, no, I can't remember anymore. Hold on. What is it? My plugin baby. Um, I, I'm sorry, I don't know. I can't remember. Sorry. Was it? Uh, <laughs> was it about uh, you travelling around the world? Well, it's and just, it's got... all random. It's it just comes out. I mean, it's random. I've got no idea what I'm singing about at all. Sorry. It's just like it's just it's just kind of like write a few chords and that, and then just you know improvise a few words and just hope it means something. It does mean something. Trust me. But I can't work it out myself because I'm subjective. You see. So I can't actually quite work it out. That's, that's for you lot to work out. <laughs> but the, the thing is, I don't really know what the song's about. You know, I mean, I just, I, they just happen. I just, I just, it just happens. It's like, I just, it's, it's, it's pretty random. If, if you imagine like using emotion and like you, that emotion is is looking through all the randomness that you've experienced in your life and just picking out little bits and putting it together. Uh, so, so one line might be about one line might be relating to an ex-girlfriend, or one line, line might be relating to something happened to you when you're young. Yeah. Some line might be a fear and hope of the evolution of mankind. You know, but but it's it's like generally it's all activated by emotion. So so the, 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 the songs don't have themes or anything within. Yeah. It's more like little bits. Yeah. If the only thing that's the thematic it would be the emotion of the, of the song. So the emotion of that song would be similar to uh, it's probably it's probably like the fears and hopes of, of technology evolving around us without us and you know taking over from that sort of stuff. The lyrics from the demo still appeared in early versions of the song.
but only a few of those lyrics were kept for the final version. Yeah, we've got the name uh, for the song Plug In Baby from an Argos catalogue. Did you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is great! <laughs> it, was, uh, it was Van Your House. This was, this was like back in the late 90s or something, and, uh, or 2000s or whatever. And uh, what was it though? Was it, wasn't it a, a baby oh, monitor? It was like a baby monitor yes, or something? Yes, my, my opinion. It was like a baby monitor and it was called a plug-in baby. We just thought we said, that's, that's a great song name, let's just use that. Although Matt Bellamy has also mentioned other origins for the song's title. It sounds made up, but it was uh, written above a sex shop. In, uh, you know, I was living in this, no um, yeah, I was living in this uh, sort of commune type situation. I mean, it's not, you know, it's a sex shop where it just sells like dildos and things. Like yeah. And um, but we, um, <laughs> but we, we would rehearse above there because they had like they have some, there was some space above it that was no one, no one was using, and that's where that song actually yeah. came to be. It's a plug-in baby, you can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> There's the inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> the main riff has some classical influences, and incorporating classical music ideas within rock is something Final Fantasy composer Nobuo Uematsu shares with Muse. Although those short snippets are pretty much identical to Plug-in Baby's riff, they are probably not linked, as Matt has cited DJ Shadow's track Organ Donor as an inspiration for it. The video was like, there's just these models hanging around. <laughs> And um, uh, we saw it, there's a, a Ministry of Sound did a year magazine or something, Ministry, and, it, and there's a, this girl on the front cover, she's all right. <laughs> and then we said, let's get her in the video, and we did. And then, and then chopped Yeah, she's in the video, yeah, that's right. Chopped in half. And then chopped in half. And <laughs> um, where did you film the video? Um, I think it was in the house, you know, that film of Clockwork Orange? Is it? Is it Clockwork Orange? There's some house where there's a big stone cock. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Have <laughs> 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 you seen the film Clock Clock Orange? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's in that room there. Yeah. We actually wanted to have lots of little limbs crawling around and hands everywhere, but we didn't have to... Uh, like, it cost a lot of money for effects and stuff, so we couldn't quite get that. Because the idea was to have them... <clears throat> so the idea was to have all these like bits of limbs like poking out from like underneath the bed and other things and over a bath and things like that, and then eventually they'd all sort of wriggle around and, <laughs> and come together or something. But, um, but it, in the end we couldn't afford to do that, so we just sort of did some cheap effects on the computer. <laughs> but yeah, it's sort of nearly, nearly got the effect. Just after the second chorus, I sing really high falsetto. I used to do this thing on the early albums. I still do it a little bit now, where I sing through kind of distortion sounds, like almost so it makes my voice sound a bit like a guitar lead solo. And uh, so I'm singing way up there in the high register. I think I hit an F sharp uh, falsetto note, which is pretty, pretty, really high. It's a pretty uh, difficult part to sing, whilst especially whilst playing the riff at the same time. I like singing. I like singing full range and everything um, because um, I'm not sure why. It makes me feel funny. <laughs> Uh, it make, uh, it's sort of a bit weird, you know. But the thing is, I can sing very, I can sing very high. Um, I went, to, I went to see uh, uh, once. Uh, I went to, someone took a photograph of my vocal cords, and um, it said they like a woman. <laughs> It's something I sort of was never sure about whether I should do it with the band or not. I used to just like sing low and stuff, but then I just thought, I just thought, bug me, you know, I just thought like, you know, whatever, just go do it. Because I'm not really embarrassed, you know, any, anymore about it. So, and, and, it and I sort of feel more comfortable singing in that range, really. Well, it's interesting, I heard a comment earlier on being in front of the stage and somebody said, oh, I always thought that that was his guitar. And, you know, and it was a real screech, which is quite nice, which is why I used the word instrument from such a yeah. tiny guy. It's quite <laughs> impressive, isn't it, Dom? <laughs> it's very impressive, you know. This was actually one of the reasons that the band fell out with their first American label, who wanted the band to re-record the song with less falsetto. Hey, one this second. And I was going, nim, nim, nim. <laughs> like, like, it just wasn't really working. You know I mean? Yeah, I'm sorry, can, can you give the first impression again? <laughs> and you sound like... <laughs> and I'm like... <laughs> all up there, I guess. It's like, you know, it's, it couldn't be further apart, basically, yeah. So you're talking about friendship. 
Uh, well, brotherhood with us, you know, it's a friendship and brotherhood, but it's like supporting each other. There is something that ties you together if you've been together since uh, teenage years. It's, it's hard to really put a finger on what that is. It might be because you've been on that journey from coming from nothing to being very successful mm -hmm. that it, they become some of the only people that you can actually really relate to mm -hmm. and talk about mm -hmm. what the journey felt like and the, up, the, you know, the ups and downs. That it, it, they become the only people that, are, that know every single data point of your life. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you know. Well, you're now in a situation math wise, because I know you love math. If you too are interested in math, Maps, Brilliance is the best way to learn maps, coding, and artificial intelligence in a fun and interactive way. Brilliance has thousands of lessons that are tailored to you based on your past experience. It uses the first principles approach to break down complex topics. The lessons let you play with the various concepts, a proven method to be six times more effective than just listening to a video lecture passively. For example, if you're into artificial intelligence, they've got this brand new large language models course that helps you learn how to tune models like ChatGPT to generate different outputs, such as lyrics, poetry, or a cover letter. Go to brilliant.org slash free minutes, or you can use the link in the description and you'll get a free trial for 30 days, as well as a 20% discount on the annual premium subscription. Thank you so much to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.